2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I want to look at verses 7, 8, and 9. Context of our discourse today will be found in 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, but I just want to read a portion of it. It's going to make sense when I read it. 2 Corinthians, oh, New Testament book, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version this morning. Thank you to the praise team, um, to the music ministry, um, to the media, me, media team, hello team, security. Thank you so much. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Let me start at verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above all, above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that, he would, that it would depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. You may have your seats in the presence of God. This morning, for the time that is ours to share, I want to talk from the subject, life after a no from God. Life after a no from God. God's no's are different. They are no. But God's no is attached to a yes. When God tells us no, it's important for us to understand the weight of a no. W-E-I-G-H-T. And the weight of a no. W-A-I. There is something heavy in God's no, and then there's something hopeful in God's no. With two boys, one being 11 and one being two, my two-year-old don't un does not understand no. As a matter of fact, when I tell him no, he looks at me and smiles and does it anyway. And as I'm looking at him, under, trying to get him to understand why I don't want him to do some things, he doesn't get why I want it. And sometimes for us, when God tells us no, he doesn't give any other information. Sometimes we have to have faith in a no. Sometimes we have to trust God with no information. Sometimes we have to go without having any type of direction, understanding, knowledge. We just don't have what we asked for. And that could move us into a place called frustration with God. Where God, if you check my record, at least for the last amount of weeks or however long you've been saved or trying to do right, when you ask God to check your record, you would expect him to respond to your record. I've been paying tithes. I've been going to church. I, I ain't cussed nobody out this week. 
I've been doing good, God. Here is my request. And sometimes we think God ought to respond to us and what we've done. God is not a people pleaser. I thank God for that. Because every now and then, I'll admit it because y'all tell lies. I ask God for the wrong thing. I'm so nearsighted, I'm so myopic that I can't see beyond where I am and what I am and what I have. And sometimes in my life, my ability only is to ask for what I can have right now that will never benefit me any later. When God tells us no, two things happen. One does and one doesn't happen. What does happen is our priorities aren't in line. When, when God tells us no, that means our priorities are not in line with God's priorities. But when God tells us no, it doesn't mean our prayers aren't answered. When God says no to us, his no has a weight with it and it is always attached to a yes somewhere. We have to learn how to respond with our life after God tells us no. Okay, let me say it like this. You can't have everything you want. Y'all looking at me like deer in here like, you can't, you cannot have him, her, it, they, that, this, because you want him, her, that, this. I know you done studied, I know you done prayed, I know you done got the education, I know you done got the certificates, I know you done got the pillows with the stains on them, I know you done got new wigs, I know you done got a new suit, I know you done lost some weight, I, I know you done done a lot of stuff, but stuff, you can't have it. Now how do we respond to a life after God says no? Paul kind of gives us an inkling and a clue as to what our response should be after we've heard no from God. The mature Christian, the Christian that is mature enough will always have an, a plan of action on both sides. Smart Christian doesn't just want the answer and think about life with the yes, but a mature Christian thinks about life with the no. And I want to give you some information about what happens when God says no. How do you live your life after a no? Why does God say no? Number one, the reason why I believe the text teaches us is that God says no because it is to keep us humble. Keep us humble. Verse 6 says this. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool for I will speak the truth, but I will refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. What Paul here is suggesting, is, let me give you a little bit of context. Paul is responding to his, his, his naysayers, to those that are his adversaries. They're talking about how good they are and how amazing they are and how, how great they are. And, and Paul is writing to the church at Corinth because he cares about them, has been there, and he's responding to what's happening on the ground. And Paul says, I got some stuff in my resume too. But here's what humility does. Humility is an experience, not an expression. And what Paul suggests to us is, is that you don't have to go around telling folk what you got going on. Walk around knowing that you got it going on and don't tell everybody. I'm finna, tell, I'm finna help somebody live today. Too many of y'all posting too much stuff on social media. Don't nobody need to see in your bathroom and don't nobody need to see you with your undergarments. Don't nobody need to see you with all that. Listen, too much stuff is being publicized. Every now and then you got to do some stuff in private and look at folk and know I got it going on and you don't even know it. 
You can hear folk talking about how good they got it, how good they man is, how good they woman is, how much money they got in the bank, and you can sit over there and have more money than them, have a better relationship with them, and you don't have to say nothing. Just be humble. I like what the Good News Translation says. It says, to keep me from being puffed up. And every now and then, it's good for you just to hold your resume back. Hold some stuff back. You ain't got to tell everybody everything. And, and, and humility keeps you low enough for God to find you. See, God looks for people to bless who are low. Because the Bible says that he gives grace to the humble. Which means he will give you what you need if you stay low enough to get it. So what he says here, verse 6, is that I don't want you to hear me. I want you to see me. I want you to watch and see what I do. Because I got some things that I'm, I could be proud of and you could be proud of me for. But, but what I am now is a, is a born again believer. What I am now is a true Christian. I ain't what I used to be. I'm better now and I ain't got to tell you why I can walk in my why. Verse 7, he continues on the humility. He says, unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelation, which means he, he, he was talking about the concept of, of seeing this brother being, whether he, whether he was caught up in the third heaven, whether it was a vision or whether it was a reality. He was saying, I've seen some things. I've got some information. That's all he's saying. I got some information that is heavier and thicker and wider and deeper than anything you've got. But I ain't going to say nothing. He says, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. So the response that Paul has was, is that because I got a problem with my own humility. The Lord helped me. Every now and then, we get human. Every now and then, you have a day where you're just human. Oh, are you not? Every now and then, you just, you just, human what I mean by that every now and then you just want to say something let me let me say it like this 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 is what it is they they got on my last nerve oh that ain't the one okay I got one I got one they kept pushing my buttons Every now and then, you just wake up some day human. And it's hard to do work and be successful and not want to tell nobody. It's hard to have a resume that's, that's, that's awesome and dynamic. It's, it's hard to have a great experience and not want to tell nobody. You go to a nice restaurant, you're going to tell it. You got good things going on in your relationship, you're going to tell it. On Facebook, you got bad things going on relationship. You gonna tell it on Facebook? And now and then we get a tell it spirit. Couldn't keep it to myself. <laughs> Had to tell it. But in response to our inability to be unhuman in the sense of telling it, he gives us a thorn. Now, I don't know what the thorn is for Paul. I, I, I've read the commentaries. I've, uh, I've studied and I've, I've looked in in, in Greek and I've, I've tried. I don't, it, it, it's not clear what this thorn is for Paul. It is, it is suggested that this thorn is a physical ailment that Paul has. Maybe a limp or 
some type of physical thing. Uh, it could also be suggest he had a temptation that continued to overtake him. Um, it, 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 it could have been some type of mental thing. We're in mental health money. It, was, it is suggested that it could have been a mental thing that he had. Um, we don't know what it is, and rightly so, because I would hate for, us, for me to preach the sermon today about one thing and miss you on your thing. Because some of us have certain issues that others of us do not have. And the truth is, I think it's ambiguous, ambiguous because we need to know that it's just a problem we all got. I got a problem. You got a problem. All God's children got a problem. I got a thorn. You got a thorn. All God's children got a thorn. There's something in your life that's keeping you from not being too cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs out there in public like you want to be. There's something keeping your mouth a little bit shut. You might open it a whole a little bit, but you ain't going to open it a whole lot. There's something that's keeping you grounded. There's something that's keeping you near to, to the right place instead of the wrong place. There's something we all got that's keeping us humble. Tell your neighbor, I got something. Tell them, you got something too. Be humble. He says, I've been given this physical thing or this mental thing or this spiritual thing to keep me humble. Here's where I got it from. I got it from a messenger of Satan. New King James Version says to buffet me or that word means to, to beat me. In essence, he's saying Satan is helping God keep me humble. Ever been glad by the devil? In this case, it's all right. The messenger of Satan is in, employed by God to keep me from being too unhumble. Helping me keep my mouth closed when I want to say something. The devil is helping me not want to stab somebody who's messing with me. The devil is helping me from keeping me from cussing these folk out. The devil is helping me keep him from slapping somebody. The devil. Because the words are in my head, but it won't make it to my mouth. Staying humble. I'm staying grounded, I'm staying low, I'm staying, I'm staying in a place of submission unto God because I know there is life after a no from God. Number one, we get a no, life after God is, keeps us humble, but number two, a no from God keeps us hopeful. Keeps us humble, but also keeps us hopeful. Look at what he says in verse number eight. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that I might depart, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Verse 8 says that Paul asked for the thorn, that ailment, to be removed three times. Three times Paul asked. I don't know if God responded every time. Or if God responded on the third time. I wrestled with that. But God responded by saying to him, after asking him three times, my grace is sufficient for you. So it's, it's, it's not a no. It's something else. Warren Worsby, he is a theologian and commentator writes that 
Every now and then, there's a life that we live. The Christian life is blessed by transformation. Where God will step in and transform some things. But then the other times that there's a life, a Christian life is blessed by substitution. Which meant whatever there is, that is there, you don't get it removed. It's substituted for something. In essence, what he's saying is, Paul, who's asking for the thorn to be removed, didn't get transformation. Wasn't changed in any way. But he was given a substitution. Instead of transforming you, I'm going to substitute transformation with substitution. My grace is sufficient for you. So what it means is, I'm not going to take it away from you, but I'm going to give you some extra to handle it. Because every now and then, you may ask God to remove some stuff that's bothering you, that's burdening you, that's, that's, that's plaguing you. But what, what he says is, is that I'm going to give you a substitution. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to let you keep it, but instead of transformation, I'm going to give you some extra for you to handle what I've already given you. And, and what God suggests to us through this text is, is that we know how to handle the hurts we have. The grace of God is sufficient enough to carry us through the pain. The grace of God is sufficient enough to carry us through the struggle. The grace of God, the unmerited favor, the grace of God is able to, to keep us and sustain us. The great, You don't know how you was going to make it after mama died. You don't know how you was going to make it after the diagnosis. You didn't know how you were going to be, but look at here now. You're sitting up in here all, all, all online, but by the grace of God, tell somebody it was the grace that kept me. I'm still hurt, but grace. I still have pain, but grace. My marriage is still tore up, but grace. My mind is crazy, going cuckoo for Cocoa Puff, but grace. If it had not been for the grace of God, I still got a thorn. I still got issues, but I got grace too. I wish somebody would hear me today. Tell your neighbor, but I got grace. You looking at somebody that's jacked up from the neck up, toe up from the waist up, and beat up from the knee up, but I got grace. Job situations going crazy, but I got grace. But I got grace. But I got grace. I know it's bad grammar, but it's good gospel, but I got grace. What Paul says that God says, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. Which meant, I've got enough to make it even when it looked like I should quit. I wish somebody would get happy off this message today. Somebody was about to throw in the towel. Somebody was about to give up. It's mental health money. Your mind is doing playing tricks on you. But let me tell you something. God's grace will step in and take over your life. And you're going to find yourself waking up some more moments. Uh, by the grace of God, uh, his spring of love reached down and touched you, picked you up, uh, turned you around, and placed your feet on solid ground. You know what? His grace. Because of his grace, I'm hopeful. He said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength, oh Lord, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So, so, hold on, hold on, I, I, I used to come up, hold on, I'm about to come back. Because I feel it coming up this left leg right here. Feel it. He, 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 here's what, here's what. Paul said, God said, he says, my grace, capital M, is sufficient for you and my strength. Which suggests to us, I got to cut across the field. Which suggests to us, we're going to make it. 
That's all I got to tell you. I said, I don't, I don't know what you got going on, but you're going to make it. I don't know what problems it is, but you're going to make it. Not because you're strong, but because you're weak. Not because you got all the answers, but you know the one who does. So I'm hopeful, not because I'm going to learn something, but because I know who God is. And he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can think, dream, or imagine. So I'm hopeful, even though I'm hurt. I told you, boy, you better hold, stop it now. You, you pushing me now. Life after a no from God. Keep me humble. Keep me hopeful. Lastly, it'll keep me happy. Keeps us, it keeps us humble. Keeps us hopeful. Lastly, keeps us happy. Now listen, listen. I'm talking to mature Christians now. Cause this, ain't, this ain't the baby lesson, okay? This is the grown folks lesson here, okay? Verse 10, verse 10, he says, no, no, look, end of verse 9, he says, therefore, as a result, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ, Lord, have mercy, may rest upon me. Verse 10, here it is. Therefore, here's another therefore. Woo. You know you grown when you got two therefores. You know you real saved when you got two therefores. All the pain in your body, therefore, therefore. Okay, okay, all right, come on, come on. We gotta go. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Listen, what it suggests to us is that we need to affirm our infirmities. It is when that pain comes, you need to affirm that pain. This is pain. This is trouble. This is struggle. This is hurtful. This is undermining. You need to affirm it. Not because you want it to stay around, but you need to switch your disposition from I'm looking at the pain to I'm getting ready to celebrate the pleasure. Okay, I need you to hear me. And you need to learn when you're a mature Christian, you learn how to be happy when it hurts. You learn how to be, you, you learn how to be joyful even though pain is present. This is why folk will say to you, how do you keep smiling? How do you keep showing up? How do you keep going? It's because I do have the thorn, but I also have grace. And I'm happy today, not because I got a thorn, but I'm happy today. I feel it right now. Come on, boy, you can do what you can do. I'm happy today because I got God on my side. Here's why I'm happy. I've got Jesus who is able to help me through this. Why am I happy? The pain is still in my body. The problems are still present in my life. The issues are still relevant. But I've got grace. And because of that, because of that, I am happy. Take a name, I'm happy. I'm real happy. Not because this knee ain't hurting me, but because God is good. I'm happy, tell your neighbor, I'm real happy. Not because I ain't in pain because of a death of a loved one, but because I know God, he is good. Tell your neighbor, I'm happy. I'm real happy. Because if it had not been for God, who was on my side, I would be dead sleeping in my grave. I'm happy. Because I know this is it. Come on up here, y'all. Because I'm, I'm finna go cuckoo right here. Because I know that I have a thorn, got a problem. But I know how God responds to my thorns. When I get a thorn, I cry. When I get a thorn, I'm hurt. But the reason why I'm happy is because I know how God 
responds to thorns. Say what you want to say about me, but I know how God responds to thorns. Do what you want to do to me, but I know how God responds to thorns. Say what you want to say, but I know how God responds to thorns. Uh, doctor, give you a bad diagnosis. I know how God. And the reason I'm happy is because I can't wait to see what God's getting ready to do. With the thorn I got in my side. The thorn I got in my life. I can't wait to see what he's going to do. I can't wait to see how he's going to bless me. I can't wait to see how he's going to deliver me. told me no keep me happy I'm trying to let this thing go but I don't mess around and got a case that can't help us I can't help but get happy I can't help but get happy thank you Jesus because one Friday Jesus was in a garden and he prayed but God said no that Friday they whipped him, nailed him to a cross. He died after the no from God. But early, early, life after a no, early, somebody holler, he got up. <laughs> 